In more than 20 years of practicing medicine, I've collected interesting facts about your body. Join me on a tour head to toe of Your Body is Interesting. gastrointestinal tract is a tube running from your mouth all the way down to your anus. Your mouth uh, mechanically breaks up the food, uh, your stomach chemically liquefies it so that in the small intestines the nutrients can be absorbed and then finally the large intestines removes the uh, water. The food moves along uh, by a process called peristalsis. Uh, the muscles lining the intestines uh, contract in a coordinated fashion like a wave and uh, in a unidirectional wave which uh, moves the food along uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, snakes are essentially a muscular tube as well and uh, uh, slither along uh, uh, in a, by a similar fashion. Uh, <clears throat> the esophagus is the name of the tube between your mouth and your stomach. The peristalsis there is so efficient you can actually drink uh, a glass of water while standing on your head. Uh, now the acid in your stomach is hydrochloric acid, an acid so strong it can um, melt uh, steel. Uh, there are certain substances that are impervious to acid. Um, if you fill a metal bottle up with acid, it'll melt. But if you fill a glass bottle up with acid, um, it is unaffected. And the way your stomach protects itself from being uh, melted itself is the lining secretes uh, a layer of mucus which is impervious to this acid. Now, when the uh, thickness, the wall of the stomach, uh, secretes acid out the surface that goes towards the cavity of your stomach, for the stomach lining itself to remain unchanged, for its pH to remain the same, it has to blow out an equivalent amount of alkali, uh, the opposite pH, uh, out the opposite side, which is the side of the bloodstream. And so uh, after a big meal, when you uh, blow out all this acid into your stomach, you're blowing out all this alkali into your bloodstream, which makes its way up to your brain, and that's why you feel tired after a big meal. In kosher diets, uh, one doesn't meet, mix uh, meat and dairy. Years later, a scientist uh, found that the enzyme that digests meat, called pepsin, works best in an acidic environment, and a different enzyme that digests uh, dairy products, uh, like milk, uh, is lactase, which uh, works best at uh, the opposite uh, pH in an alkaline environment. Uh, in 1911, um, a fad diet called uh, food combining uh, came around and it followed essentially the same principles of a kosher diet which paralleled that of the physiology of um, digestion. Your intestines um, are 25 feet long. They start at the end of your stomach and go all the way down to your anus. Uh, the first section after the stomach it's called the duodenum, followed by the small intestine, then the large intestine, ending with the rectum. The term duodenum uh, comes from the Latin uh, for 12, because early anatomists uh, uh, found that the uh, length of a duodenum was 12 uh, finger breaths uh, long. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the large intestine's job is to remove uh, the, the water uh, so you can absorb the uh, fluids that you drink uh, uh, in, into your system. Uh, if uh, your large intestine doesn't absorb that water, that's diarrhea. And one of the way uh, diarrhea occurs is if the large intestine starts moving along too quickly uh, there's no time to absorb that water. And an example is when the uh, large intestine is infected itself, uh, it'll start moving along quickly to flush out the toxins and um, rid the body of the uh, infection. 
Speaking of flushing, uh, flush toilets uh, date back 2,000 years BC to the Minoan um, civilization. Um, uh, uh, the expression taking a crap or going to the john uh, also alludes to the history of the flush toilet because the inventor who was credited uh, with the flush toilet's name was John Crapper. Now, no discourse on the gastrointestinal tract uh, would be complete without some discussion on farting, flatulence, passing gas. Uh, first of all, uh, most of that occurs uh, while you're awake. Um, the where the gas comes from is mostly three fourths of it uh, from the bacteria which live in harmony in your. Uh, intestines, namely in the colon, uh, that produce uh, uh, their gas, and the rest of it comes from either swallowing air or the combination of the acid in your stomach mixing with the alkaline uh, juices in your small intestine and producing carbon dioxide as a byproduct. The nature of the gas that the bacteria make uh, is uh, uh, predominantly carbon dioxide as well with some um, hydrogen and methane. Um, methane is the uh, component that gives it its characteristic smell uh, with or without some sulfur uh, based on your diet and um, uh, methane is flammable uh, which uh, perhaps uh, during your teenage years, a friend of yours might have demonstrated by lighting one of his farts, uh, pastime of young boys. Now, people with lactose intolerance, uh, uh, an enzyme deficiency that makes it so they can't digest uh, dairy products, uh, have a lot of extra gas. And the reason for that is the dairy uh, products that they eat um, uh, don't get absorbed by their own body and continue persisting along uh, the um, gastrointestinal tract um, and when it makes it to the colon the bacteria there have a uh, party they've got more uh, food for them uh, and then producing their carbon dioxide hydrogen and methane uh, gas byproducts of their own digestion now uh, the uh, gas produced by the bacteria breaking down milk is how the holes in Swiss cheese are formed. As the milk uh, solidifies into a solid uh, cheese, the gas pockets remain and form those holes and then when you slice the cheese you get the characteristic hole. Now some people have a remarkable ability to uh, manipulate the passing of gas uh, with their an anus uh, muscles uh, a Frenchman named Le Patome uh, used to actually uh, perform on stage playing songs uh, demonstrating his art uh, with his unusual instrument. Uh, Pumpernickel uh, is German for devil's fart. Uh, where that comes from is when the bread was uh, first uh, invented by a baker, the locals actually found it to be an awful um, uh, bread. Um, however, with uh, travelers passing through, some people in some other countries found it um, appealing and um, persists to this day. Uh, the most gas producing um, bean is soy. Um, if you want to uh, decrease the uh, gas uh, from any bean, uh, when you cook it, uh, cook it with an equal portion of rice and that'll remove uh, the majority of uh, this effect. Now, given that uh, aside from the stomach, which is acid, uh, the remaining uh, length of the intestines, the environment is the same, it's alkaline. Um, and I had mentioned that the bacteria uh, seem to live uh, exclusively or at least 99% in the large intestine, um, you gotta wonder what makes that any better. Um, the reason is that the rate of the peristalsis, uh, the moving along of the intestines, uh, is not uniform. Um, 
the stomach takes about four, maybe even six hours to get the food out of there. Uh, the small intestine moves very quickly and uh, there's no time for any bacteria there to proliferate and uh, colonize. They get flushed out and then in the large intestine, which moves very slowly to give it time to absorb all the water, uh, they can multiply and that's why you find them there. Uh, it's a fortunate thing because the gas that the bacteria produced otherwise would have to traverse the zigging and zagging of the small intestine and would have difficulty uh, getting out. Finally, bringing us to the rectum at the end of the line, um, the rectum is merely a storage station uh, for your poop. Um, and when it's full enough and stretches enough, it'll start wanting to contract and you feel the urge to go to the bathroom, and so you do. The degree to which uh, your bowel movements uh, float in the toilet is uh, uh, dependent on uh, how much gas uh, is present in the stool. Now, you'd think that the um, composition of stool is simply uh, the food that you ate that never got fully digested. Uh, actually, a significant portion, uh, one third uh, of your stools, are uh, the bacteria that uh, uh, live in the intestines. Your intestines are not the only part of your body that um, uh, bacteria live in harmony with you. Uh, they live on your skin as well. And uh, they're so numerous that if you were to freeze dry a person, remove the um, water, and then uh, figure out what percentage of the dry weight of a human body is these bacteria, it's 10%. In fact, there's uh, more microorganisms on one person's uh, skin than there are people uh, living on planet Earth. The way uh, microorganisms, uh, single-celled uh, organisms, uh, proliferate is by a process called binary fission. They Basically, they just split in half and then those halves split in half, uh, etc. An example of a single-celled organism is a paramecium. If all of its offspring uh, were to survive indefinitely, uh, the f and the first paramecium started dividing on January 1st, the ball of paramecium offspring would be the size of the planet uh, by April. Now, of course, it's a good thing that the uh, uh, bacterial offspring uh, don't survive uh, very long because otherwise we'd be in real trouble in our uh, large intestine. Um, you might therefore envision um, that the mission of the large intestine is to uh, get rid of uh, these bacteria uh, which, as I said, is a significant component of what stool is. Uh, it's a, a, as if there's this ongoing campaign to prevent uh, your intestines from totally filling up with bacteria.